Hello, I'm Tom Lee, and this is Yale Center for British Art at Home. Every year, Yale Center for British Art welcomes hundreds and hundreds of students and teachers from schools in New Haven and all around Connecticut into our galleries. We love to talk to students about artworks, paintings, sculptures. We like to find out what they notice, what ideas they have, what questions they come up with. But even when the museum is closed, you can still enjoy hundreds of artworks by looking at the museum's website, www.britishart.yale.edu. And you can search the collection there and you can download copies of pictures at home. I want to talk to you today about one particular picture and I'm going to do something that we often do in the galleries. I'm going to tell a story. The painting is called Stratford Mill. It was painted by John Constable in the year 1820. I printed out a copy of Stratford Mill on my home computer, just like this. And you can print a copy like this too at your house from the Yale Center for British Art website, www.britishart.yale.edu. It's a fun way to look at the picture in detail. Now, Stratford Mill is a really big painting. When you come to see it at the Yale Center for British Art, you'll notice that it's six feet wide from the left side to the right. So there's a lot to look at in this picture. And we always encourage students to take their time, take a nice, slow look, and ask yourself, what do you notice? What's happening here? What details do you see? What questions do you start to ask about this picture? What do you wonder? What do you notice? What do you think? What about the setting? Where are we? What details do you notice about the sky, about the land, about the water? And what about the people? Who do you think they might be? What do you think they might be doing? Is Stratford Mill a place you'd like to visit? It's kind of fun to imagine walking into this great big picture and taking a stroll around, maybe meeting some of these people. When I look at Stratford Mill, I look at this boy with his fishing rod. He reminds me of a story I love to tell. Once upon a time, there was a boy who lived with his grandfather. They got along pretty well together. The grandfather loved to fish, but the boy's favorite thing to do was play hide and seek. And there was a reason he loved to play that game. You see, this boy was the best hider. I don't mean he was good. I don't even mean he was excellent. I mean he was the best hider. When he played hide and seek with his friends, this boy always won. No one could ever find him. But when he played hide and seek with his grandfather, he always lost. You know why? His grandfather was the best finder. It didn't matter where that boy hid. His grandfather always found him. Just once, the boy would say, just once, I want to hide somewhere where my grandfather cannot find me. Well, one day they were sitting having their breakfast and the grandfather said, Grandson, we haven't been fishing in a long time. Let's go fishing today. And the boy said, Excellent, Grandpa. I'll be waiting on the front stairs. And his grandfather said, Yep, you and I are going to go fishing as soon as I finish reading the paper. When the boy heard that, he said to himself, Oh, brother, I'm going to be sitting here for a long time. When this boy's grandfather read the newspaper, 
He read every word on every page. And there was the boy just waiting for his grandfather until he had an idea. He said, if I have to sit here and wait and wait, I'll hide on my grandfather. And I'll tell you what, today's the day I'm going to hide somewhere where my grandfather will not find me. So he thought, and he thought, and he noticed at the bottom of the stairs, lying in the grass, a peanut. And he said to himself, I'm good. No, I'm the best. Am I good enough to hide inside that peanut? And you know what? He did. Don't ask me how. I don't know. But he hid himself inside that peanut. And then he said to himself, this is the best place. My grandfather will never find me here. And you have to admit, that was a good idea. But there was a problem. Along the grass that morning, bright and early, there happened to come a chicken. And this chicken was a very hungry chicken. And the chicken was peck, peck, pecking around, looking for something good to eat. And the chicken peck, peck, pecked over here, and peck, peck, pecked over there. And the chicken peck, peck, pecked right over to the peanut. And as soon as the chicken saw that peanut, she thought, mmm, looks good. Oh. And the chicken swallowed the peanut. So you tell me, where was the boy? Inside the peanut, inside the chicken. And that was bad, but it got worse. The chicken wandered off into the forest near the grandfather's house. But what the chicken did not know was that in that forest lived a fox, a very hungry fox. And the fox took one look at that chicken and thought, mm -mm, time for breakfast. And the fox swallowed the chicken. So you tell me, where was the boy? Inside the peanut, inside the chicken, inside the fox. And that was bad, but it got worse. The fox went deeper and deeper into the forest where there lived a wolf. A very hungry wolf. And as soon as the wolf saw the fox, she thought, mm -mm. That looks delicious. <gasps> and the wolf swallowed the fox. You tell me, where was the boy? Inside the peanut, inside the chicken, inside the fox, inside the wolf. Could it get any worse? Oh, yeah. You see, the wolf was feeling very full, and the wolf was feeling very thirsty. So the wolf decided to head down to the river to take a drink of water. But what the wolf did not know was that down at the bottom of that river was an absolutely enormous fish. And what happened was this. The wolf came walking along, to take a drink of water, and the fish came swimming up to take a little look around, and the wolf saw the fish, and the fish saw the wolf. And whether you believe me or you don't believe me, I don't really care because this is what happened. Oh. The fish swallowed the wolf. You tell me, where was the boy? Inside the peanut, inside the chicken, inside the fox, inside the wolf, inside the fish at the bottom of the river. And that was bad enough. And all this time, do you know what the grandfather was doing? Was he looking for his grandson? Grandson! Grandson! No. 
He was reading the paper and reading the paper. But then he finished. He put the paper down on the table and he said, Now where is that grandson of mine? It's time for us to go fishing. And he went out on the front porch and he said, Hey, grandson! Hey, grandson, let's go! Ah, uh, I know what he's doing. <laughs> My grandson is hiding on me. <laughs> My grandson thinks he's the best hider in the world, but I always find him. So I just have to think to myself, he's probably behind a bush. But no. Maybe he's behind a tree. Nope. No grandson there. And the grandfather said, Huh, well, I don't know where he's hiding. You know what? If I can't find him, he probably isn't hiding at all. He probably went off to play with his friends. I did take a long time to read the paper today. Oh, well, I'm just going fishing by myself. And he did. He went down to the river, he took his fishing rod, he took his reel and his line and his hook and his bait and he cast it into the river and he thought he might be sitting there for a while, but oh, oh I'll tell you what, he caught himself a fish. And as he reeled it in, he said to himself, this one's big, this one's huge, this fish must be enormous. And it was. He pulled out of the river the biggest fish he had ever seen. And the grandfather thought to himself, now what would a fish eat to get this big? I think I'll take a little look inside. So he did. He opened the fish's mouth and do you know what he saw inside that fish? Did you say a wolf? Because that's exactly right. What are you doing in there? He said to the wolf. And the wolf said, I don't know. Listen, said the grandfather, if I pull you out, you promise not to bite me? And the wolf said, Just get me over here. All right. The grandfather rolled up his sleeve and he reached into the fish's mouth. Oh, and he pulled that wolf right out of that fish. And he threw the fish back into the river, and the fish swam away. And the grandfather looked at the wolf and said, Hmm, Miss Wolf, what have you been eating today? And he opened the wolf's jaw, and inside the wolf was a fox, for goodness sake. The grandfather reached into the wolf. He pulled out the fox. He put the wolf down. The wolf ran away. Hmm, said the grandfather to the fox. What have you been eating today? He opened the fox's jaws and bark! Bark! bark. Inside the fox was a chicken. For goodness sakes, the grandfather reached inside the fox. He plucked the chicken right out of the fox. He put the fox down. The fox ran away. And the grandfather looked at the chicken and said, Well, what have you been eating today? And he opened the chicken's beak and... Really? A peanut? <laughs> He put the chicken down, the chicken ran away, and the grandfather looked at that peanut and thought, well, that's good because I'm getting a little hungry here. Hmm, the grandfather said to himself, inside the fish was a wolf, and inside the wolf was a fox. Inside the fox was a chicken, and inside the chicken was this peanut. So the only question is, what's inside the peanut? And the grandfather took that peanut and cracked it open and out came his grandson. And the grandson said, Grandfather, you found me. 
And the grandfather said, whoa, whoa, of course I found you, grandson. I knew where you were hiding the whole time. And the grandson said, gee, Grandpa, you really are the best finder. And the grandfather said, oh, I know, I know. Now, grandson, let's go fishing. And they did. And the boy was very glad that he was not inside the peanut, inside the chicken, inside the fox, inside the wolf, inside the fish, at the bottom of the river. And that's the story of the boy who hid inside the peanut. I hope you liked the story of the boy who hid in the peanut. And when you come to Yale Center for British Art and see John Constable's great big painting, Stratford Mill, maybe you'll remember the boy and his grandfather and the adventures that they had. Meanwhile, if you want to print a copy out at home, it's a great way to sketch the picture and notice as much as you can about what's going on. Maybe you want to sketch the whole painting. Maybe you just want to sketch a part of it. Mr. Constable lived very close to Stratford Mill. He loved to paint scenes that were very close to his own house. I wonder if you could look out a window in your house and make a sketch of what you see there. Or maybe sketch your backyard or the street in front of where you live. Maybe you can create a story using that drawing as a setting. If you do, we'd love to read your story and see your sketch. The Boy Who Hid in the Peanut is a really easy story to retell if you can remember the four animals, chicken, fox, wolf, and fish. Maybe you can make four sketches of each of the four characters in the story. That'll help you remember them in the order that they come in, and then you can retell the story. Have you ever seen a mill? In 1820, when Mr. Constable painted this painting of Stratford Mill, it was very important to have a mill somewhere close to every community. It's where you got your flour from your wheat or your cornmeal from your corn. The miller had a very important job. You might want to look up some mills that are near you or research on the internet. What can you find out about the way mills worked? If you make some sketches or do some writing, we'd love to see your work. Please send it to us in an email. The email address is ycba.education at yale.edu. Thanks for listening to Yale Center for British Art at Home. I'm Tom Lee. Come back again for another story another day.